welcome everybody to uh i guess my introduction video um where the goal here is to uh, basically document a project um from start to finish from kind of the inception uh all the way to you know the end game however far these go uh, my name is dustin um, and the goal here is to create a tabletop role-playing game, TTRPG, for those uh, not familiar. Um, and I guess, let me back up and give you guys the elevator pitch, which admittedly I don't think the project is going to be popular. Uh, but I've been reading a book recently, or I should say I just finished a book, uh, called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. Um, and this project is kind of effectively my attempt to put those principles into into effect um the book talks about how creating things should be done kind of publicly um or in some cases even cooperatively and uh, you know you should be helping your peers uh, reaching out for help um consistently uh you know i think a lot of people that that create stuff or do projects do so privately um, and I can definitely say in my own process, I, I'm never usually public until I'm comfortable sharing something. So I'm throwing all that, that business out the window and I'm going from the ground up. So I kind of have like two goals. Number one is to you know, see how far I can take that project. Um, like, you know, kind of treat this as sort of like a video series on how to create your own role RPG or maybe a design series because um, I'm going to be talking about mechanics and, and things like that. So if that's something that you're into, uh, buckle up. Uh, every Monday I'm planning on putting these out. Um, if My second goal, I guess, is, is really community feedback. Um, uh, you know, I do have a little bit of experience designing things uh, on the video game side of things. Um, I am a big fan of role-playing games, but I'm kind of coming into this as a bit of an amateur. There's so many uh, systems and, and there's a huge community around this stuff. So, you know, whatever ideas I invariably have, uh, I'll just wait for you guys to tell me that they're they're wrong. But but I, I can take some punches. So so I'm I'm uh, happy to to ha to have some debates. I'm happy to involve anybody who who wants to be involved in the project. If things get big, I could see me possibly like live streaming or doing something on Discord for for more you know healthy interaction. Um, and maybe taking community ideas and things like that. In fact, I'll probably, at the end of each of the, the videos, I'll probably create a like a quiz or, or some something for feedback that, you know, if you watch the video and you're like, huh, I want to give, he was wrong about this or, or, you know, he was right about this or I have questions for this man, um, you know, you'll be able to do that. That's that's sort of the, the, the end game here. Um so, so yeah, um, I'm kind of starting with the bare bones here. And this is, so yeah, I haven't opened Google Doc. Um, the only thing I've written is is the DNA of, of a tabletop game. Um, and we, I mean, we can kind of touch on that. Um, but, but realistically, uh, I think at the, out of the gate, I think identifying like a, a setting, um, finding a story and a world that that you're passionate about is kind of like a really important first step. Um, yeah, I would say, and then next, you immediately kind of think about rules. Um, at the very least, you're going to need to start defining sort of like core statistics and then sub statistics and then like char the character sheet things always be, you know, that's a big thing. Um, the complexity of, of what you're designing is uh, like you need to figure that out pretty early in, in the design process. Um, after you sort of get your stats done, then you can start thinking about character creation, designing, um, coming up with, uh, you know, how characters sh should function in your world, um, classes, uh, you know, jobs, whatever. Um, uh, do, does your system have like an alignment of morality? That's usually a pretty big piece. Um, I know Dungeons and Dragons, the, the big classic, you know, has the, the sort of nine grid system. So, you know, whatever whatever your system happens to be. Um, and then you're sort of getting into role play mechanics. I, I would say most tabletop games sort of boil this down into um, you have combat and then you have non-combat sections. Um, some games are themed a little differently. Some games, you know, do some, some crazy stuff where the focus is not combat at all. Um, so it kind of depends on what you want to do. 
Um, and then you got to talk about growth, like leveling up, like how wh what does that wh what does that look like in, in your game? Um, and then this is where you start getting into like sort of the the nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts. And this is you're, you're talking gear, items, weapons, armor, inventory, vehicle, whatever your your system may have. Um, and then along with this too, I think this is usually the time that like you get into magical elements or supernatural elements or things that for lack of a better term, a person, a normal individual wouldn't be able to do, whether that be like a power that's awarded from a class or or um, any anything like that would sort of fall into this, this category. And after you've defined all this, I mean, you really kind of have everything you need to sort of get started. Um, some monsters, NPCs, story elements, and world building. Um, most, most tabletop RPGs sort of throw this in a different book. Um, you sort of have, I mean, you, most games that are, you know, big usually boil down to two or three books. You sort of have the, the, the player's book, the, the book that, that if you want to play it, you should buy this book. that will teach you how to make a character. It'll teach you about the world. Basically all, all of this, like one through seven or one through eight, I guess. And then you sort of have like a dungeon master's guide or a GM guide. Um, which is basically just all about the world, you know, how to build worlds, all, all that good stuff. Um, so the monsters is its own piece. Uh, there's usually supplemental books that kind of add additional uh, monsters. I'm not really going to be, you know, we'll see how far the project gets, but my goal really from the onset is just to create a, a very simple, um, you know, game. I'm, I'm sticking to just the just the the player guide. Um, so that means I need to, I you know, one through one through eight maybe. Uh, we'll see how far we get. Um, and as far as a setting, um, you know, I debated with this maybe making ma putting it up for a vote, but I want to make sure that uh, that I follow a project that I'm passionate about. So um, while I will definitely be letting people influence my decisions in terms of how mechanics work and, and, you know, sort of the design process and, and possibly, like, classes, all that stuff. Um, so for for the tabletop RPG that I, that I want, um, hmm, I think... So I want something with... Uh, yeah, that's, like, high stakes um, in combat, something that has sort of a focus on, on high stakes tactical combat, um, and a lot of times when you're creating something, um, and we'll, we can kind of break this down and say, you know, setting specifics, like, like it, sometimes it's important to identify what you want to see in a tabletop game that you're not getting. Most of the time it probably already exists, but again, I'm, I'm here to design rather than, than to, you know, find out what someone else is doing. The, this, uh, the act of going through the project is something that I enjoy, but regardless of how far we get. Um, so, uh, number one, one of the things I, I dislike about a lot of the tabletop RPGs that I play that have combat is that they kind of, um, they can sometimes feel sluggish. And when I, what I, when I say sluggish, I, I'm not sure if I mean the actual mechanics, meaning like the act of doing all the rolling and totaling and all that, um, but I actually mean like the combat can feel, um, uneventful or, or sort of boring. Um, I think many people who have played D and D have had the experience of like a, a, a boss or something that kind of feels spongy, where it feels like you need to go through several turns of combat without anything meaningful or impacting. Um, so, so I want high stakes uh, tactical combat. Uh, that's that's number numero uno, um, and. Uh, I would like to, I would like to see something that is arcane slash magical in in nature or um, like I don't even know. Getting into like subgenres of fantasy at this point, but like uh, high fantasy with focus on magic. And, and not, like, a lot of times I feel like this kind of gets into, like, steampunk territory. I don't really want a strong steampunk influence. I'm looking for something where 
uh, in the world that I'm en envisioning or the, the system I want to design, magic is, is common, uh, part of sort of everyday people's lives. Um, it's used in, in technology. I'm, in, I'm envisioning like floating airships being commonplace. I'm envisioning um, weapons that are made out of like elements or, or magic or things like that. I'm picturing guns that shoot magic. Um, yeah, something along those lines is, is what I'm thinking of. Um, so like tech magic, I don't, I'm sure I'm sure there's a there's already a name for for the setting that I'm thinking um, in my mind. A couple a couple influences that I can sp think of off the top of my head. Um, let's see, Riot Games just put out a, a series on Netflix called Arcane. Uh, which is quite incredible, highly recommend, but um, that setting um, in Piltover is, is kind of where, where my headspace is, something along those lines where there's definitely very clear-cut fantasy elements, but it's sort of juxtaposed with, um, with magic being very commonplace. So you get all these excuses to do cool things, and I think that's just so neat. Um, Let's see, there's a, a, an RPG game I just finished recently called Chained Echoes, um, also really good, highly recommend uh, if, you're, if you're into that. It's kind of like a, it's an old school, it's kind of like 16-bit, kind of like Super Nintendo inspired uh, RPG game, but the setting is very much kind of in that same vein that I'm thinking, where, um, where, you're, where you're seeing modern influences, but it's at its core, it's, it's a fantasy setting. Um, so... I'm going to kind of leave it there, and, I, and that's intentional. Um, I, I want to make sure that I leave things uh, open-ended. I, I think it's easy to slip into um, like a story hole and spend like a week just sort of like, oh, this would be so cool, and fleshing out all these details. Um, one of my recommendations would be don't do that. Keep it simple. Keep it like just a couple, a couple things. Um, and then as you work through your design, some of those elements will start shining and some of those elements maybe not. And you'll, it'll influence your decision when it gets time to start doing more detail on the story. Like for, as just a random example, when you get into gear, right? This, this is so dependent on, on what sort of setting um, you're choosing. Um, one of the things that I wanna focus on with my game is vehicular, combat and vehicle um, movement, or eh, not even movement, uh, vehicle, vehicular travel? Yeah, I like that. Um, but I, I wish we had some cooler rule sets for vehicle combat, and I have some, some cool ideas here. Um, so that's something that I want to tackle. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for in terms of setting specifics, this is... This is enough for me. I don't really, like I said, I don't want to flesh things out like crazy right now. As I go through design and as I start fleshing out the bits and come up with like a stat system and figure out what I want to do with all that, um, I'll start getting a better read on, on where I want to take the setting. And, um, you know, you guys might help influence me in that regard. Um, but the, I guess the point I want to make is don't, don't spend too much time uh, focusing on, on, on this element too early on, but do make sure you get a, a rough idea of, of what you want to do. And if you're struggling with, you know, figuring out like what, what you want to do, my recommendation would be to look at what you're currently using and figure out what, what, what you think would make it better or what you, what you think could be done it, it differently. Those questions are really open-ended and they sort of start a conversation about like what you like and what you don't like. For example, um, obviously uh, focus on, on magic is going to be big on, on the setting that I'm envisioning because it's like, it's you know in everyday life. Um, one of my issues with uh, D&D in most of its iterations is the way that it handles spell casting. I, you have this big list of spells. Um, I love when when you you know magic it, it takes away some of the magic of magic because you're limited in in terms of what you can do by what the specific spell says so in my mind um i'm envisioning some sort of magic system that's like fr free casting or uh, by uh ideas of the player so i'm not going to have specific spells i'm going to come up with a way to let the player 
decide what they want to do with the magic they have. I still need to ground that in, in rules, um, so that's going to be sort of a design challenge. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's something that would be really, really cool to see. And I, and I kind of want like a, like see, like, like a cinematic experience, like a, a high stakes, um, yeah, cinema experience. A lot of times uh, D&D can, can feel kind of mundane or boring. I, I want to make sure I keep the focus on, on sort of like the action and things like that. Um, like, uh, let me see if I can think of an example. Like, let's take the element of fire. Very, you know, basic, normal. When you're dealing with an elemental school of magic, fire is always going to be one of the ones that you see, right? Um, in D&D, there's plenty of fire spells. Um, and and a good a good DM will, will definitely allow you to do specific things with them, um, but you're more or less limited role play wise with with you know the fundamentals of, of you know what's on what, what those spells are, um, and in my system I want magic to be more commonplace and more just a thing that people can kind of do. Um, and so allowing the players to use magic and roleplay scenarios in, um, I I and in creative ways, it would be, would be really cool. So that's, that's going to be complicated. Um, we'll, we'll see if I can, if I can make good on that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially, uh, kind of where we're at. Um, and I think, uh, I did come up with, with a, with an image, um, just to kind of get you know get my ideas uh, going and give us kind of a rough title and this is what i'm working with so far um very simple uh anima arcane so obviously you're seeing the influence on the magic right there um and anima meaning souls uh so i don't know this is all subject to change um i also love the i want the backdrop i want the game to feel um kind of like this background makes me feel uh, nice beautiful open uh, uh, kind of scenic um, so yeah cinematic experiences um, wild world and lo lots of monsters um, <clears throat> unexplored world because of its own own kind of bullet point um let's see anything else that i can think of oh I, one thing that i that i always thought uh would, would be cool to see in a uh in like a ttrpg is sort of like a, a focus on um bonds between the between the players um so i want to create some sort of bonds system player Players can cooperatively earn, we'll call them roughly the titles or something for now, um, for perks slash powers. Um, so basically, if um, if two players interact in a role in a role play wise. Um, that often enough to where, you know, the table kind of understands that, oh, these guys are rivals or, or maybe these two are lovers or, or, um, you know, these two are married, so anything along all of those lines. I want to be able to create a, like a title that those players both get and their character gets like an in-game benefit, um, for it. I, again, very, very rough right now. As we go through, all of this is going to get um, sort of changed. Um, but this is basically the uh, the pitch. Um, I'm going to try to turn this into like maybe like some sort of a, a storyboard um, and kind of go through the pacing. I mean, I feel like this video is kind of like step one. Um, which is really kind of setting up the setting a little bit and kind of giving some specifics of like what what I'm looking for um, The whole races thing that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. I'll probably do a whole video um, On coming up with like all some ideas for races um, I, I Really I, yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough one. Um, I, I can tell you that that I love when when there's a race that like I've never seen before, um, I love 
when we see elements of um, like animals um, and things like that in races, um, like bird people, I, I feel like they they never get get their due as like a core race. I want to. Um, so so I don't know. There's um, we'll, we'll get into that. I think the next video was probably going to focus on the stats because um, I think that's really an important critical first step. Um, before you start talking races and, and defining like what that actually means when, when you do that, you really need to start coming up with, with a set of stats and how those stats work together for players to do actions, to do things, whether that be combat or, you know, non-combat or, or special powers, whatever, you still you need to have some kind of stats. Um, and your game can be simple, your game can be, you know, really complicated. Um, all kind of depends on the experience you, you want the players to have. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it for kind of the opening or the, the opener. Um, this one was, wasn't too long. We're only talking 20 minutes. Um, my goal with these is to make them maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and obviously this one was kind of a short one, it's the intro, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys are intrigued. Um, I, like I said, um, you can keep your eye on the YouTube channel every Monday. I'm planning on throwing new videos up. Um, I'll probably be active in a couple discords, uh, and probably a couple Reddit threads too. Um, kind of posting about this stuff, trying to, you know, get people, get some interest. Um, if, if you are interested and you want to help out, um, awesome. Um, you know, if you are, like I said, you know, if you're interested, help out. Um, the biggest thing I think that would help me so far is probably exposure. Um, obviously, you know, coming into it is, is a bit of an amateur and a relative unknown. It's not going to, I don't expect this project to be, to blow up or get bigger or anything like that. Um, but like I said, uh, if you, you know, you know of anyone who might be interested in something like this, um, reaching out to them and letting them know to check it out would be awesome. Um, either way, uh, I'm going to keep plugging away at the videos. Um, I may do a second one today just because I still have some, some extra time left, but normally probably just, just the one. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap this one up. So thank you guys. Uh, I hope you guys are interested, excited, etc. Um, all right. Take care.